What's up guys, so this is episode 3, in which this episode we're going to talk about variables and constants. Now, our programs need to have ways to store and retrieve information, you know, as storage or to get input or output. To store of such values, we will never use a constant since a constant is a value that does not change, ever. An example of this constant would be pi, which is 3.1419 something 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 something. I'm not that big of a nerd. Now, constants, like I said already, it's something that never changes. So if you have something, let's say a percent or an equation that never ever changes, I highly recommend you use constants since it's very easy to mess up and make that variable which is supposed to be a constant into something else and then mess up your code. Now for values that we can actually change we use variables and in order to use variables or constants we need to be able to use identifiers which helps identify what type of what type this code is like let's say it's a variable and whatever the variable name is you would have to state whether whatever the data type it actually is which is very important because you don't want a text to be number or vice versa now yeah, yeah, yeah. okay let's just start making some variables now Okay, now to actually start off making variables, you use the keyword var. Simple as that, var, space, and then whatever it is. Now, since it's not like put statements, you do not need any double quotes. You don't need a container, but you still need like a name for a variable. Let's say the first variable where you're going to talk about... What variable should we use? Um, let's use subscribers there you go that is a variable name now we should what you should really check out as well I'll actually put in the comment section below is Turing keywords either there I'm gonna put in another episode but yeah Turing keywords and built-in procedures and functions you don't want to use those as your variables because if you do it will mess up your you an error and shove it down your throat and say oh bam error yeah basically it's yeah so I want to have turn key because I don't have it on the computer duh. oh it doesn't matter because I'm probably gonna put it somewhere else so yeah check the comment section below it's gonna have a bunch of turn keywords that you should not use as variables because if you do you'll get an error and Turing is going to yell at you now you have variable subscriber now, in order to make it uh, declare the data type, yeah, the data type, use colon, space, whatever it could be. It could be a real number, integer, string, or boolean. Now, well, let's just say since it's the subscriber, you're going to assume, oh, it's just a number, right? So, yeah, let's, it's going to be a number. So, for this number, we're going to use an integer. Now why use integer and not real? Well real it just integer is just whole numbers and you want whole numbers for your subscribers because what kind of subscriber is half a subscriber or 0 0.1 of a sub subscriber? You can't because it has to be one whole subscriber because it's one whole person. You wouldn't like put an ad on the internet and say oh I just want four and a half people to help me move some stuff to my new house. You can't f have, get four and a half people. Yeah, you just can't do that. So that's why you use integer for this. Because integer gives uh, makes it as a whole number. Whole number. No decimals whatsoever. Now to actually put content or a value into this variable, you would use colon enter. And whatever is after this is whatever the variable subscriber has if it's 10 um, 20 or even 1 how sad is that or even 0 how super sad that is or even as much as Freddy 1 which has like 2 million plus we can't put plus but yeah 20 million 2 million so I don't know 
So yeah, whatever you put after this um, is whatever the, the 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 value of the variable subscriber. So we're going to put it as 10. Now let's say you want to change it somewhere in mid code. So you have a bunch of lines of code which I don't have right now, but let's say you did and you want to change this variable into something else. Let's say, oh, you just got like a few more subscribers. You want to update this, but you don't want to go all the way back up to change this. To change this. In order to do that, you would use, well, nothing. You just type in subscriber, um, this thing again, and then an updated version. So right now, I'm pretty sure this is right. But yeah, it is. So in order to change a, a value inside a variable, you would write down, type down the variable and then declare whatever the variable is like the, like the, the value of this variable and then whatever the value is. And again, this could be letters and such, but since you have declared it as a integer, which is a whole number, which is a whole number, no decimals. It would end up as this. Now, even if let's say you had, um, let's say you had nah, 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 nah. exactly, you will get an error if it's if you put in decimals into this because it's an integer, and it will only accept integer whole numbers. If you put some random decimal, or even if, even if you put zero point one Turing will yell at you saying oh there's an error bro fix it so after you get that it's basically if you when you have an integer you for the love of God do not use decimals even have even if you have this it will have an error because it's the wrong type even if there's nothing after that it's still no decimals whatsoever okay so don't put any decimals only whole numbers when you're using integers if you want to use decimals, you would use real, which I'll talk about later. Now, with these integers and such, with um, basically right, right here, you are changing the actual piece of code. So this de redeclares the value of the variable, the subscriber. So when you actually do run this, when you actually do run this, when you do it, all right, I don't have print yet. So always have, you know, Put statement to print it out. Now, yeah, I have 20 now. See, now this is only put in a subscriber, and it just has the number, which is just the number as it, as it gets outputted. Now, I've right now you can basically see right here is that if you actually want to print out a variable, you just use put space. Always remember the space, or it's not going to work at all. And then you just you don't have to put it in any kind of container. Well, you could if you want, but it would make no difference. So you can just have this variable printed out and you know that's 20 since you just redeclared it right here. Okay, now for some styling rules that you should really get working. Number one, be descriptive. As in be descriptive with your comments. So, oh, let's say this, this, this prints, hello world explanation mark be descriptive with your code don't be ridiculous don't be messy because if you're sloppy or messy with your code it's you it's going to be a bigger pain later on when you mess when it gets messed up and you're trying to find what went wrong you might not know what went wrong because well yeah just might not know so always be descriptive always have comments in it at least have like one comment per a few pieces of code Unless it's super simple. For example, put hello world. You're just going to print hello world. But if you're going to use, let's say, a variable, um, then you can write as a comment for this a uh, number of subscribers or subs. I say subs because it could be like the sandwich of subs or whatever. So, you know, always be descriptive, always explain your code. Like when you're coding and you're putting in comments, think of it this way. 
um, give like write down your comments as if you are explaining to someone your code like it could be a teacher or your friend or your classmate always have comments of some sort to explain what you're doing what this particular line does why you use this parameter instead of this one or this setting etc etc second um, constants should be in uppercase although I have not done constants yet let's do constants now to declare a constant you just use const c o n s t right here you just use this as a constant now constant variable let's say pi I th I'm pretty sure pi is not an illegal okay it's not I think okay it's not let's say it's pi and then this is a real number and let's say it's 3.1141 Five. Actually, let me try remembering this. Um, ugh, why am I trying to remember pi? Um, dang, I think it's um, 3.141592. Close enough, 5 4, I think. And I'm missing probably like a few million or billion digits since, you know. The number, the number pi, if you haven't known this already, it's basically, it's as of now, they've been calculating since like ever, and it's down to like, I think over like several million or even over several billion digits long, and they're just, they're just trying to look for a pattern, and they're not finding it. Okay, so constants. So you actually make a constant, you might want to make it uppercase, since constants never change, you might mess up with a variable, that's why you want to use uppercase and if you remember these formatting rules that or etiquette you would understand coding much better make your life easier and make everyone else in the world easier unless you like to make them rage okay three for multiple words let's say you have this very nice variable called number of students. Now when you're actually doing this you might want to use underscores. I mean you could use underscores or you could use uppercase for every single time that's like num like the next word because if you do that it's going to be a lot easier when you're actually doing this for styling purposes. Or you can use. Okay, never mind. So, yeah, that's basically the two very useful ways. Either you put in underscores or you use uppercase letters of whatever it is that is the next word. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for styling rules for naming variables or half a very small portion of general formatting of your code when you're actually programming which is very very important um i'm probably gonna might as well do this again okay i'm just gonna explain this again so i'm pretty sure i did a horrible job of explaining it before this right here is um the keyword that is used to declare a variable now remember the space now this is the name of the variable. The name of the variable is declared in the very be beginning pieces of code where, well, it's the name of a variable. And this variable can change. And it's like used because you don't want, let's say you have like, you want to order pizza. And actually, no, let's say you're a pizza parlor and you well, of course, you're probably not going to use Turing, you're going to use like something else. You want to make prices for your pizzas and such. Now, you don't want to make um, it, um, you don't want to make it as text for your prices, because if you do that, then let's say you want to change it, you're going to have to change every single piece of code. Now, it's a hell lot easier if you use variables. So this is the variable name, and then there's a space here, and then this colon it just well, it just explains, oh, what 
type what what is the data type of this variable now for, now for this one we're using an integer and if you haven't then you can always go back and say and listen to what I've said about integers integers is numbers that are whole numbers no decimals whatsoever this part is what is the declare part now this declare part it declares whatever this variable has as a value this declares a value for this variable and this is whatever the um, the the it's whatever the content well I forgot what yeah this is basically the content of this variable and basically therefore this it means that this variable is 10 so let's say you print it out that's what you get you get 10 because you have you have declared that it's an integer and you have also declared that the value of this variable subs is 10 and then you put it as you print out as an output on um, the variable subs and you get 10 and that is basically it for this third episode of Turing variables and constants I'm probably I'm gonna go back to this probably because it was long it was horrible ish and it was kind of boring so thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and such. Leave a comment section below if you want a better explanation. Actually in the comments I'm going to put a way better explanation, you know, with text and bunches of arrows and such since I'm not doing it with this. And so like I would probably do com uh, nah, it's okay. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.